So we'll get into human hearing. So we've talked about sort of dBs, how we measure sound. We've talked about uh, the sound waves themselves. This is how they interact with the ear. That's an ear right there. It's a very simplified one, but uh, the ear is an analog to digital converter. It's taking analog sound pressure waves and turning them into electrical energy running to your brain. Um, it's comprised of three main parts of your outer ear, which is that ear canal. That's where all the gooey stuff starts coming out. Um, if you have a hard time hearing, that might sometimes be the problem. Uh, I, had <laughs> I had one student here. He's now graduated and works somewhere else, but he came to me after one practice. He's like, I cannot hear anything out of my in-ears. And he's like, I keep turning it up, and it's just barely hear anything. So we looked at them, and they were just so full of earwax <laughs> that the sound couldn't get through. So we got them some new ear tips, and that fixed the problem. But same thing happens in your ears, too. So sometimes just you know, make sure they're clean. Um, the middle ear is made up of the three smallest bones in the body, uh, which amplify and transfer the sound. Uh, and then your inner ear has the cochlea and auditory nerve. So uh, there's your dia the, the diaphragm. So sound hits that and then causes these little bones to vibrate and then uh, it runs through the cochlea and that transfers it to electrical energy. So yeah, sound waves travel through the outer ear, down the, the ear canal, striking the eardrum, causing it to vibrate. The vibrations are passed through the small three bones. The bones transmit to the cochlea. So the cochlea contains tubes filled with fluid. There's tiny hairs inside the tubes that pick up vibrations and convert them to nerve impulses. These impulses are delivered to the brain via uh, the auditory nerve, uh, and the brain interprets as those impulses as sound. So this is kind of the interesting part with it. The hairs closest to the ears opening pick up the highest frequencies. It's why they're the first ones to go. They're the ones that get the most sort of abuse. Um, and then, again, then we're getting into that like length of sound wave. So it has more time to travel so it can develop those lower frequencies. And then that's how you pick those up. But it's also why one of the reasons we're less sensitive to lower frequencies is because they have to make it all the way to the middle. Um, uh, be bad to your hearing and you've lost your best mixing tool. Um, you can mix with the faders, that's fine. But the best thing is just listen to it. You know what? You should know what music is supposed to sound like, and that's sort of the goal you should be aiming for if you're mixing a band. So like I said, we hear from 20 to 20 is, the, is a good average. Um, but when we get down to 20 and under, while we can't really hear 10 dB, or sorry, 10 hertz, uh, you do get, again, harmonic frequency, so you will hear something. It'll just get sort of quieter as it moves down. But you will feel it, because the sound waves are just massive. Um, so under 20, you're just sort of feeling the, the, the frequency. Um, above 20 kilohertz is out of, we can't hear, but other things can. So dogs are actually around 45 kilohertz, and cats are up around 79 kilohertz. Uh, and that's so they can hear like mice and walls. <laughs> um, so as, as you age, your hearing, the high end in particular, will decrease. Uh, as some of our more gray-haired people. I'm, I'm starting to notice it, too, and it's really sad. <laughs> um, yeah, a little while ago, I actually did the whole, like, high-frequency thing just to bug the people that were, in, that were in here after chapel. And I was like, man, this doesn't affect me as much as it did, like, a couple of years ago, <laughs> which is kind of sad. <laughs> uh, hearing damage. So hearing damage causes hearing loss. There's three types of hearing loss, conductive, sensory, and neural. Sensory hearing damage is what we're concerned about with live sound. Um, it happens when the tiny hairs in the cochlea are damaged or destroyed. Uh, you may be able to hear most sounds, but they'll be muffled. Um, it also means you can't hear the full range of frequencies. Uh, it happens when you're exposed to s sounds that are too loud or loud sounds that last too long. Once damaged, those cells can't grow back. Uh, but this is a big thing, uh, temporary threshold shift. So if you're listening to something really loud, for uh, about 30 minutes, like you go into a concert and, and you're in there for about 30 minutes. If you go out into a quiet room and someone talks to you, you'll notice that it's 
It's actually muffled. And, and what's happening is um, the hairs inside your ears are actually sort of standing up to try and uh, reduce the volume. Um, and so it sort of muffles it down, and, and your brain is sort of trying to turn everything down. Um, so if you're the one mixing stuff, and it's getting loud like that, sometimes it's a good idea to just sort of, if, if I'm doing like the pre-service practice, and then we're going to go into a service, often what I'll try to do is 10 minutes left before the service starts, usually we're done, I'll go somewhere quiet, and that just sort of helps reset your hearing level, so that you're not cranking everything up because it's your your brain is already turning it down. So just getting a, getting some quiet time in. Um, I know one guy that came here and mixed a band that we brought in, he had custom earplugs. So throughout the concert, he had earplugs in, uh, and then he would just pull them out every now and then, make some mix changes, put them back in, and that was just to protect his hearing over the long run. Um, but he had, they were fancier ones, so you can get musicians' earplugs, they mold them to your ears, and then they're ported, and they put filters in. So when you use those like little orange scrunched up ones, you can hear all the bass still. That's because it's just going through it. But it's cutting out all the high frequencies because it can't get through that foam. But the custom ones, that little port, you can, you can put in a thing that will cut 10 dB, 20 dB, and it's, it's supposed to affect all the frequencies equally. So um, that's one thing to look at if you're dealing with that type of thing a lot. Uh, a good thing to do is get your hearing tested. Um, and one of the things that that can help with is if you do have hearing damage and you know about it, you can make mixed choices based on that. If you don't have high-end hearing, cranking the high-end till it sounds like it's the right amount of high-end isn't good for everyone else that doesn't have hearing damage. So if you know that you're going to have low high-end response, then mix knowing that there's not going to be a lot of high-end. and That'll be better for everyone else. Uh, some symptoms you can look out for. Uh, some sounds seem overly loud, difficulty hearing uh, specific things in noisy areas, high-pitched sounds, uh, especially the S and, and th sounds, are harder to distinguish. Men's voices are easy to hear, just because they're lower. Uh, other people's voices sound uh, supposed to be muffled. <laughs> And uh, ringing ears, that's tinnitus. I used to have a thing that said mwop because I was from a show called Archer. The guy had tinnitus. He would keep doing that every time he shot a gun. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's really hard. Uh, it's a really hard thing sort of balancing because... Um, I've heard a lot of people like, oh, if someone complains it's too loud, then turn it down. But it's like, well, um, yeah, you are sacrificing for this person. But you can also say that goes the other way too. And, and so that's where I was saying, like, if you sort of map out, like, what's, is there some quieter places in your auditorium? And if you know that, then you can tell people that are, have sensitive hearing. It's like, you could even mark it out. This is a sensitive hearing zone. It's going to be quieter over here. Um, or offer earplugs. That's the other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the further to the back, like the further away you are from the speakers, it's just going to get quieter. Um, the only problem you're going to run into with that is if they have line arrays. That's where they have like all those big speakers, because that's designed to solve that problem of volume over distance. Because what they are is they're just very skinny slices of sound, and then they can turn up the top one so they can go further. And then as they go down, they get quieter because they're aiming closer to the front. So that's that's the point of line arrays is steerable sound. But yeah, it, it's it's a hard thing, and that would be again like that be a better discussion with your pastor, or worship leader, to sort of decide like what level do we run at? Um, what do we do for people with sensitive hearing? Um, yeah, it's, it's a hard, because it involves someone sacrificing. So um, that's, it's, it sort of comes down to it's a hard issue and um, how your leadership wants to deal with that problem. So, yeah. Yeah, and some, sometimes it's, yeah, it's like if we throw out a dB meter and be like, oh, it's 86, and that's normally fine, it could just be there's a specific frequency that's, that's sort of piercing. Um, 
the, the way our hearing is sort of set up, we hear around 2K a lot better. Uh, that's generally where the higher end in voices is so that we can understand each other in that one to 3K range. Yeah, that's the intelligence area. And that's what we've been designed to hear so we can communicate with each other. That's also the, the frequency that a lot of electric, lead electric guitars sort of ring at. So sometimes it's a good idea just sort of pull out 2K out of, out of your electric guitar or something that could be in that range. So yeah, it's, it's sort of something, to, there's multiple causes that could be and you have to sort of figure out what it is and what's the best way to deal with that. Sometimes it's a, like a people issue, sometimes it's, um, sometimes you just need better speakers that are better tuned, that type of thing. Um, yeah, so ears limitations, like I said, if you know that you don't have a lot of high end, you wanna mix knowing that, and so that you're not like hurting everyone else's ears. Unless you want them to all be as equally hearing damaged as you. They can all be deaf together. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so safe volume mixing, knowing that too loud can cause damage in your responsibility to the congregation, you need to establish sort of a baseline volume. Generally, most churches aren't hitting into the sort of danger zones for volume, but like even uh, like concerts, they've over the years have actually gotten a bit quieter. They've found better ways to mix them. So they still sound full in there. But um, I remember leaving some concerts and my ears were just ringing at the end and that doesn't seem to happen as much anymore. It sort of depends also where you're sitting and what your current hearing is, but I find that they're, it's more of an issue for people. They, they definitely care about that more. Uh, so this, uh, this is the Fletcher-Munson curve, um, which I think got renamed. Uh, but basically, what, this is what I was talking about. We don't hear low end as well as we do that intelligibility range at 1 to 3K. And so what this is showing is these, here's your frequencies along the bottom. And then uh, this is the SPL that's like the threshold of hearing on the bottom one. So in that higher frequency range here, we can hear it just above... Uh, Actually, it might even be below zero. But then as it goes back and we hit 100 hertz, the same sound here that's at zero it would need to be 30 dB SPL for us to hear it at the same level. And then as you go further back, that's probably 20 hertz. It would need to be 75 dB. So um, you guys heard a white noise? That's like the static you hear on TV. That's all of the frequencies at once um, equally uh, at equal levels. Generally, when, we, uh, when you tune a sound system, you use something called pink noise. So pink noise sounds a lot better to our ears, and what it is is it's white noise compensated for this curve. So it'll turn up the lows and bring down the highs a little bit, and you get, it'll sound more even. So the reason we hear white noise, it's very high frequency, is because they're all even, but we're hearing this stuff way more. So yeah, take breaks if you're mixing for a long time. 